public comment. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes. Uh, these were sent out a little while ago. Any changes on the minutes? We do have a second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, they're approved. Okay. Um, I don't know what the culture is here, but I received from institutional effectiveness, uh, review of guidelines of shared governance. Um, many of you have probably seen this often. Um, I don't think we need to read every page, but it does uh, cover BRAC and who should be on the committee and what we should be doing. Is there any concerns or anything you want to discuss about it? Okay. Not hearing that. If at any time anyone has a concern, please bring it up and we can chat about it to make sure we're doing what we're supposed to for our, uh, shared governance. So who is the co-chair? I've never met him. Um, Jack? Jeff? Well, Jeff was here. Yeah. I don't think he's been here since. Not like, since so I've been president. employed. Yeah. yeah. That's but I've seen him. Jeff, who? Jeff, 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 Jeff
then I will forward it to public council. Is there a culture on this campus that if individuals don't participate on the committee that we reach out to the group and say somebody hasn't been here for six months or uh, that is something that was discussed recently at college council and in their guidelines I think they actually yeah, talk about that and they say there, so I don't know the exact words but but there is something in there that indicates that if there's a certain um, number of absences that um, that, that the co-chairs are supposed to reach out to that constituency group and inform them of that and then the constituency group is either supposed to be sure that that member starts attending or they um, should replace them okay so so that I think and, and and I know I was reading through these guidelines the other day um, so I, I know it's in there somewhere I can't tell you exactly where it is. all right but I think also when you say is there a culture, I think that is also something that's been changed recently because of the concern that some of the committees were, were struggling with, with um, participation by their members. Because I don't believe we approved any minutes all of last spring. We had to wait. Because you never had a quorum. Yeah. Anything else? Dr. No, Chu? Okay. Um, the next is meeting norms. These seem pretty straightforward, pretty collegial. Any concerns or any additions someone would like for our meeting norms? Good with them? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. And then we had the survey. Um, now, I don't know if only voting members were surveyed or the resource members were also surveyed, but we had five responses. And that's not just for this committee. That's for all committees. Yeah. Well, this one is just. Oh, this is right. just this, this committee. Is, yeah. This is, yeah. yeah. It's not that bad, Mark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Makes it pretty useless. Yeah. 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 Um, so. <clears throat> but I know I responded, so I'm one of these five. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find my bar here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the outlier? No, I don't think so. Um, we did have some comments at the end, so maybe we could take a qualitative look at it. Um, there's a couple of comments about or actually three, that it's a reporting out of budget stuff uh, rather than um, an interaction and giving feedback into the budget. Um, and there's a comment about a decision-making committee. My experience of budget committees are recommending 
body to the president, and in the end, the president is the one that's responsible for the budget. Um, but I have worked with uh, Erica in the past. I do know she is inclusive and does want uh, recommendations and feedback. So, um, so this committee hasn't in the past looked at you know what the prioritizations came out of the retreats we haven't looked at the budget and question is it aligned with the master plan any of the higher level stuff no it's just been that basically a report out okay I would there have been some there have been some key votes from the committee mm -hmm. like, okay like when we set up the irrevocable trust and there, there's been some things but I don't think the committee's nature is really to vote on a bunch of different issues. No, but so. okay. But then you would need it's the name of the committee is Budget Resource Allocation Committee. Correct. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you would need to get rid of the allocation. It would be <laughs> if that just put it this sage on the stage and. <laughs> Have you looked at budgetary policy at all? No. Okay. Not since I've been on the committee. Okay. And I've noticed that maybe perhaps as an institution we're a little light on the business and financial policies, uh, board policies. And I'm not expecting this committee to make a policy, but we should certainly be involved in the vetting process be able to give our comments through and as we report back to our constituency groups we should be able to report back the thoughts of this committee okay is the committee open to being more participatory in some recommendations or do you prefer just to have a report out I think we would all like to have more say. Okay. Sure. I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I don't know about the rest of you. Gary doesn't care. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> no, historically, I've been on a budget committee for more than 10 years. Okay. Um, and at the early time, we, we were involved with some of the, not, I won't say decision making, but let's say, for example, um, there was some things that needed to be funded and if we had 20 things and it was like 10 million dollars and we kind of assist in, in giving some kind of priority list a recommended priority list so we were kind of involved in, in, in kind of like mark was saying being a little more involved in, in the decision making process mm -hmm. um, yeah but it seemed like it evolved to more of a reporting um, okay yeah. so, i think too with also like task stream uh, IEC has their retreat and things are voted on and then we never hear what happens and I think we never my close the loop yeah, yeah my understanding was in the VP the previous VP would just decide okay what things are being funded but I, I, do I would think that that would be something that this committee sure would be looking right. at and making those types of decisions right. and and I would just back it up ultimately it's the president that makes the decision right. after right. getting lots of input right. but I'd certainly think this group should be having an opinion and sharing it right. So. all right um, let's continue to work on that to make sure we're getting the information you need normally in the fall it's asking for a lot of information like we got two items I had a request to to share the categorical funding and so we're doing it retroactively saying what did we receive last year and how much was spent and what is it for and then we can talk about if the committee wants to drill in and it's not that we want to micromanage but we want to understand and then we have the first look you get the absolute first look at the 1920 budget it, still tweaking a little, uh, a few numbers here and there, but um, this 
We're now preparing it, moving it forward to uh, the budget subcommittee. And there's members in here that are will be attending that budget subcommittee that are invited. And of course, it's a public meeting, so anyone can show up. So um, we wanted to bring it here first. So um, with that being said, um, we have the grant listing. We divided it between federal and state. And if I could just go through it, it has the fund, the org, the grant description, and the top one, federal work study. We're all pretty familiar with that one, our students. And they get um, $621,399, and they spent it. And it's a student service grant is to provide part-time jobs for students with financial need, allowing them to earn money and help pay expenses. Um, and then we put every grant the college receives is on this matrix. And one of the challenges always with grants is knowing how they tie out to the educational master plan, which is currently going through the vetting process. Um, but when that's done, we should have an understanding how these grants contribute to the college. And one of the frustrations we've had um, with the chancellor's office came out with a lot of plans, a lot of plans, and were the plans integrated or were they in a silo, things like that. So I have a question. Yes. It seems that most all of these are indicated to be under student services. Well, that's uh, not completely true. Well, we, we have like number 35 is AB 104 adult education. But, but so I'm looking at number two, CTEA. And that, that's CTEA. C, yeah, CTEA. So that's most entirely instruction. Instruction. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I will say this, Dr. Juni. So um, when I did this and I looked at student services or instruction, what I took a look at is uh, the account codes to see if it was more of um, more. 1,000 uh, that we were paying out to to for teaching and as such, or if we were doing this as to um, uh, services to the student as opposed to um, either your area or Dr. Olivo's area, meaning student services or instruction. Do, do we have the ability to look at instructional support? As opposed to student services. Yeah, I can I can go back and do that. Because I I, I think the instructional well, support would be more your office and but but um, even as just as opposed to direct instruction. But even just looking at Satea, I mean it it pays supplies and equipment and stipends and and most all of that is on the instructional side of the house. Um, I, you know, and as I go down the list, the Carleton College grant, that's, that's in um, that SI and that's, that's entirely instruction. Um, so I was thinking of it a little bit differently, but I can go back and revise this based upon what you're asking and um, send it back out to the committee. Okay. okay. All right. Any other feedback on this? And, and I do want to point out number 18. We uh, have a conversation about that on our side of the house. It's small business development, so we said community. Um, it doesn't seem to fall in one of the two houses of structures um, that services. And this came up, request came up after our last meeting, I got an email, so 
if as you're reviewing this data, if you feel there needs to be other updates or you'd like more information about something, please send an email and we'll get it up. And I know every grant is different, but is it possible to know um, funds not used, do those roll over to the next year, or do they lose those funds? So, or, so. Um, yes and, and no. <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot of our grants do not follow our fiscal year of July 1 through August 31st. Okay. So while you'll see, you know, it may look like our budget was large for a sp specific grant in 1819, and we had a lot uh, or underspent on it, um, it's possible that that grant it's continues true. on. That's and we have multi-year grants, um, even with like uh, the SBDC, their grants are 15 months. So we only spend a certain amount because it, it starts July, uh, January 1 and say 2019, it'll go through March of 2020. Okay. But then January 1, 2020, we get the new grant for that calendar year. Right. So um, while it looks like we, we may not have spent a lot on a grant, that grant is more than likely continuing on. Okay, thank you. Does that answer your question, or do you want some more information? No, that was. I think that answers it. I don't. I don't want to uh, are you create case? any more work for anybody. But oh, we like work. I would say maybe the only thing at the end would be total amount of grants that the college is receiving would be nice. Okay. Should we have that. Yeah. I have it. Uh, anyway, pass it down. So Dan can see it. I think it goes back to 2012. Mm -hmm. I only have. I only brought one, just in case someone asked. Um, and then we can pass it around. All right. And then if Lucette ends up with it, she can scan it and send it out for you. If you see it drop a little bit from uh, one year. Uh, last year, last year, or 1718 to 1819 was because of the uh, LA High Tech grant ended. That was our biggest one, was 15 million. million. But in, in general, it goes up. No, for five years. Oh. Yeah, but, but they, we spent the they most in the last year. The money prior to they didn't give it to us each year. So, yeah, that was a challenging grant. Yes. <laughs> That's an understatement. Jenny knows <laughs> <laughs> about that, that one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else on grants? Okay. Then the last item is the adopted budget, the draft of the adopted budget. Our revenue has gone up to 204,000 for total resources. 301, 245. It's on page 2 of 7. You can see where. Our um, apportionment money has gone from 144 to 149 million. And although we are more comfortable with this number, we everyone knows the state is continuing to tweak the total co computational revenue. Seems every time we meet with them, they have another twist on it. So we're hoping that settled down. I 
academic salaries are up, <coughs> which reflects um, uh, the step movement and reflects the additional hires. Classified is also a our benefits are up corresponding but not as up as not as high as it was going to be before the state helped us with our stirs and food. are up a little bit and I'm looking at budget to budget not actuals and the total appropriated Let's see is up. one of the reasons supplies is up is last year for a few reasons we did not um, complete transactions of about two million dollars which we uh, designated some of the 1819 uh, ending balance to pay for, and then we're spending the money in 1920 as the items come in during the summer and fall. here who actually builds the budget on, in the system and could um, answer any questions you might have. So this is software not bought with those dollars. Correct. Or other campus dollars. This is just the general fund adopted budget. All the other funds are not included in this general fund. Is there any document that breaks any of this out? Oh, yeah. Because when you look at something like consultants, it just says consultants. I mean, mm -hmm. This is all summer, summative yeah. information. Um, it's probably pretty big. Huh? I think we have it, actually. I, I is that that big white binder? Yes. Yeah. Oh, we have that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> we'll have that. Yes. We have it. Well, we will, have it for last have year. It. Yeah, but we'll, 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 ge she'll, we'll generate the same thing for this year okay. by okay. cost center. Yeah. All right. Under services, you have rental expenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was wondering about and that. And what too. would that include? What do we rent? We rent mirror. We would. Oh, there we rent, go. Okay. Um, down on Rosemead. Uh, CDC. We, yeah, see that from Edison. We're, we're renting parking under power lines. Hmm. Um, I just found out that we rent a house next to Rosemead 
for the parking and driveway in the house that's storage. Yeah, and I've never seen it. Um, he's I'm going to go <laughs> take a look at it. But those those are he's figuring out where. And, and then we have other rental agreements in athletics. Um, I, I hear we have a very good baseball softball team, and we rent them fields. Um, oh, that's right. Looks so like. the, those are the big rentals. But this would also include rentals of stuff if we had to rent stuff. Oh, I see. I have a question. Uh, oh. Sure. Sorry. Um, under services for board elections, there's no numbers for 2018-19, and then it's like 200,000. Yeah. Does that mean the, we board serve four years and then terms, and every two years, a group of them go up that have an election, and okay. we're by area. Okay. So, and I apologize, I don't know which ones are up for election this year, but um, the county charges us to have the, the, the seats on the ballot. Okay. So does that mean like last year? Every other year. It was every year. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Where is the um, professional experts being funded from? That would be in the 2000s? 2312. So under classified salaries, uh -huh. three, one, two, so, so that it, it actually brings up a good point because when Mark asked, so when I look at this and I say classified salaries, I, I, I would think of it as just full-time classified, but it, it seems like okay. professionals and full-time are well, combined. We, we have to talk about classified. I'm a classified employee reflected in here. Most, it's not just um, members of the classified Senate. And, okay, and, and I agree with it. And that's what I was saying. That's why it's important to, to see the breakdown so you'll know, okay, you, you look at it and you say 13 million. Okay, so how does that break down? Yeah. And so that's all I was trying to bring up. It's, it'd be nice to have that one broken down so we'll know. Which one, Gary? The yeah, classified you, monthly. The I think classified that monthly is all the full time. Okay, but uh, with professionals. They 23 are 12. 23. Professional experts are relief and extra help. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, so they're, one million they're usually hourly. Okay. Those are like hourly people. Those There would be no monthly people in that line, only hourly. Oh, okay. That clarify your question? Okay. Anything else? Um, if the committee would like more detail coming back at the next meeting, we'd be happy to do that. We will have the larger notebook, but if you want to get into one of the summary numbers, we have um, a report. IT's been working on a report for me, and they told me we have 14,000 account lines. So it, it's a lot of detail, and we can take it off as granular as you'd like to get it. I wouldn't recommend trying to do it with every account line. <laughs> okay? So, the next step for the budget is we're working on, we're finalizing, double checking, and we're preparing a PowerPoint, which will go to the budget uh, subcommittee of the board. And I do not know when that's scheduled um, yet. They just uh, appointed members to the committees last night. So as soon as we get that calendar, we'll share that out also. Okay, the next meeting is September 26th. Is that date still good with everyone? Yep. Okay. All right. With that, I guess we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.